Hello, Gary Stearman. It's the 29th of February. Don't get to say that very often. And it is a Wednesday time for another Prophecy in the News update. There is social ferment taking place in Israel, and I wanted to report on that because I think it's very important to the fulfillment of Latter-day Prophecy. And uh, I'm holding a, an article uh, from Yediot Aharonot that's uh, datelined the 28th of February. It's written by a gentleman named Yaron London, who is very, very upset by some things that are happening in Israel right now. Israel is divided into two very, very uh, deeply, deeply divided factions. Uh, on the one side, you have the uh, people who count their progeny all the way back to David Ben-Gurion, Golda Meir, the founders of modern Israel, who followed the collectivist social model, and they are strictly secular. On the other side, you have highly, uh, deeply religious uh, Jews. They're called the Haredim. There are about 1.3 million of them in Israel, and they are so religious that they operate uh, under the terms of Mosaic law. In fact, they, they believe that they are the descendants of those who followed uh, the law of Moses. They're the ones you see in the black suits and the black hats and, and praying at the wall 24-7, and they are very, very religious. Well, there is a deepening division between these two factions. Uh, Mr. London, his name is Yaron London, writes this opinion piece. And he starts out this way, the doctors recommend that a maligned part of the body be cut off. The frightened patient turns to a witch doctor who promises full recovery. Some would feel better because of the placebo effect, yet physiology would quickly defeat psychology. The witch doctor's medicine would prove to be worse than the illness. And that's his opening statement. Next paragraph, Israeli society is sick. The illness is Jewish fundamentalism. I'll stop right there and say that it's very obvious that Yaron London is a left-wing, uh, a socialist, secularist Jew uh, who really would count himself uh, in the body of, of Jews who go right back to 1948 and Israel, Israel's founding under those precepts. He thinks of the rising tide of Jewish fundamentalism as a sickness. And the sickness has to do with the Haredim. These would be ultra-Orthodox Jews, the ones who wear the black suits and the black hats and, and who uh, are seen praying at the wall. They are strict legalists under the Mosaic law. And he writes, National service to Haredim who refuse to join the army is the medicine offered by the witch doctor. Now, the, the ongoing dispute is that the Haredi Jews, that is the ultra-Orthodox, have refused to do national service. That is, they've refused to join the army and fight for Israel, uh, that maintaining a strictly pacifist position. And there are some who have come along with a solution to the problem. Don't force them to join the army. Allow them to do some sort of national service. And uh, this writer feels that uh, national service is the witch doctor's medicine. And then he goes on, yet there will be no wide-scale national service, and should it be established after all because of weak politicians, it would be corrupt and terribly expensive. Moreover, such national service would not accelerate the entry of bums into the workforce. It would not produce reconciliation between secularists and the Haredim, that is between essential agnostics and the very religious. You have really two deepening uh, uh, factions here, and it's getting worse every day. He says, rather, the dispute between them would grow. And he goes on in this article, and I don't have time to read the entire article, he goes on to describe uh, the growing agony, which he refers to as a recipe for civil war in Israel. A story you don't hear very often. We focus on the fact that, that we believe the Jews have been regathered from the four corners of the world and ultimately will rise to become the single force in the Middle East. However, at the moment, there is deepening
division. And uh, to continue, <clears throat> he says, time is of the essence. Should the majority lose this war, the Zionist enterprise would be remembered as a short-lived historical episode. There's no choice but to let the draft-dodging Haredim be, but we should aim to reduce the number of their grandchildren. Now, that's pretty steep language, a very dramatic language, and uh, uh, corrosive, I think, to the internal stability of Israel. Did you think about that? Have you ever, when you're factoring all of the uh, uh, aspects of modern Israeli society into the study of Bible prophecy, have you ever thought about this division within the house of David? The Bible talks about it. Uh, Ezekiel 37, 15 talks about a division within the house of David. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and the children of Israel and his companions. Take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. You know, there has been a division in the house of David really since the days of the close of Solomon's reign. It's a long time ago. And that division between the northern and southern tribes has uh, descended into the modern era in several different ways. I think one of the ways we've seen uh, described in this article by Mr. London. Verse 18 says, And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? In other words, uh, what do you mean about taking two sticks and binding them together? You say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in thine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. Verse 22 says, And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be a king to them all. So, one of the aspects of the regathering of the Jews to Israel is the aspect of unification. Israel is still a deeply divided nation, in spite of the fact that, that the, the various uh, groups in Israel are decidedly opinionated. You know the old saying, two Jews, three opinions, and it's very much true. But there will come a day when they are united uh, in one. And that prophecy is given in Ezekiel 37. In fact, Ezekiel 37 just precedes e Ezekiel 38, describing the great war in the Middle East that is to take place one day soon. Uh, a fascinating story. And I thought you would be interested in hearing about the dispute between secularists in Israel and the Haredim, who are strict Torah-observant Jews. What's going to happen? How will it be resolved? Well, I'm not exactly sure, but the Bible says it will be resolved, and Israel will become one nation. They have to become one nation to stand up against their enemies. Time's drawing short, so keep looking up, everybody. <laughs>